Uh, I'm John T. Davis. Um, I've been making films here and in this country and all over the world, I guess, since uh, 1977. And uh, I've worked in all forms of filmmaking. Uh, but when it comes down to it, my films, my auteur films, are films from the heart. Things that mean something to me and things that I can learn something about myself from. It was a different world back then. And I guess you're talking about 1974, 75 sort of time. And um, I came into filmmaking almost by accident. Prior to that, I'd studied at the Belfast Art College uh, in the School of Painting. So when I came, uh, I, I was always interested in audio, always interested in moving pictures. And it was a kind of a wonderful uh, thing to be able to marry the two things together and uh, back then it was very difficult not like today you know it was an achievement just to get sync sound back then um, if you were an independent filmmaker and you know not like working for the BBC or UTV or whatever the hell it would be you know you had 50,000 pound cameras and tape recorders which cost me the same sort of thing so we it came to all sorts of uh, ingenious ways of working and uh, I had a little company here um, we started it in 1977 with the Alwyn James um, and we called it Hollywood Films and at that time Hollywood here in County Down didn't have any production companies in it at all so we were the original ones way back then um, but I kind of got left a movie camera, an 8mm movie camera uh, by my uncle. I uh, later, later made a, a movie about him called The Uncle Jack, which, you know, was quite a bizarre piece. Uh, but I've been doing it all my life and, you know, it's in my blood. In terms of the industry back then, what we're talking about, I, I really wasn't aware of it. Um, it was only really when I had that uh, flash, if you like, of oh, I can do this. This inspires me enough to, to become obsessive and to make my life doing this. And I guess back then, um, 19, late 70s, we were in the darkest hours of the troubles. Um, so consequently, uh, you know, the, the, uh, the television news crews from all over the world were here and I think you know the industry if you could call it back then was, was much more news and documentary orientated and I mean that's what I went for there wasn't there didn't seem to be any feature film industry at all that, uh, that I was aware of nor interested in um, because I came at it from a different thing I, I sort of uh, my inspirations were D.A. Pennebaker uh, from New York and the US and so on and that beautiful fluid style that he had. Um, I ended up making many films uh, for the BBC or ITV or Channel 4 or y you name it. Um, but for me it was a documentary industry here. I think it owes a lot to the shipyard and to the Titanic and all the history that goes with that. Um, and the, the paint hall, etc. I mean, if that, if Belfast didn't have a, a shipbuilding industry, it probably wouldn't have a film industry now, you know, because of just those wonderful halls are just sitting there. I think that's got an awful lot to do with it, in fact. Um, I remember filming in the paint hall there, when it was a paint hall, you know, doing industrial movies and stuff like that. Um, uh, you know, I'm, I'm frightened of, uh, in many ways, the, the industry here now is it's taking off big time, uh, Game of Thrones, etc., etc. Um, but it's also at the price of uh, the lesser being, so to speak, as maybe many people would think, you know, um, it's still very, very hard to get a documentary film financed here properly. Um, and if you're working outside the, the realms of what television expect these days, then it's virtually impossible. 
um, all the enthusiasm seems to be going toward uh, the big bucks, the feature films, the you know the HBO, etc., etc., etc. And I, you know, I think it, I think it's a little bit unfair. Um, you know, maybe I'm a little bit biased because I've made my life uh, through documentary. There's certainly a, a more of a you're not such a strange animal. I mean, the, I think the, back whenever I started, you, it was really, you know, you, you did stand out a lot. Um, and uh, you had to be much more ingenious about what you did and how you did it. Uh, there's kids running around today don't know what a light meter is. I think that's terrible. You know, it's because it's so easy with these little cameras. Um, and I think the standards have gone down terribly. I think people don't think about what they're doing, perhaps as much as you would need to do if you were, if you had a 10 minute roll of film, you know, which at the end of the day is going to cost you at least four to five hundred pounds to shoot it, to have it processed, to have it printed, etc, etc. And then telecine it so as you can eventually come to edit it. I remember, like, I knew the processors in the BBC and, you know, I'd go to the back door of the BBC with a few cans of film and give it to them. And they'd run it through the bath as the six o'clock news was going through. And you had to do that. And I, I think all that sort of thing's gone. But, you know, it's very difficult. As I say, ingenuity back in my day, uh, when I was making Shell Shock Rock, for example, that film uh, was made for seven and a half grand and it's still going strong today but people I suppose kids today I mean we were all learning our trade back then as well so maybe it's not that different in some ways but uh, film was the only way you could do it yeah. okay you do a little bit of an interview on on film because that's all you could afford to do and the rest of it was done on audio so you had no pictures so you had to be more creative and what to put over those, and uh, that's how I feel about it. You know.